Hello and welcome to the Grand Prix 2 highlights of the 1988 Japanese Grand Prix brought to you by Micropose and GP2 Joey. With only two rounds to go, today's race at the 3.6 mile Suzuka circuit promises to be a classic and could decide who will be crowned world champion this year. Will it be the defending champ Alain Prost who leads the driver's standings on 82 points or will it be the man who really needs to win today? His McLaren teammate Ayrton Senna seven points adrift in second. Ferrari's Nigel Mansell is third, then it's the Lotus of Nelson Piquet in fourth, Ferrari's Gerhard Berger in fifth, and the impressive Joey Davis in the non-turbo March Judd in sixth. In the Constructors' Championship, McLaren and Honda are already crowned world champions with Ferrari, Lotus a distant second and third, but it's the battle for fourth place that's the one to watch today, as only five points separates the March, Arrows and Benetton teams. So it's Senna on pole for the 15th time this season, then it's Alain Prost, his McLaren Honda and title rival in second place. Two Ferraris of Nigel Mansell and Gerhard Berger in fourth, with the British driver Joey Davis lining up in fifth. Piquet's Lotus is sixth. Then it's Thierry Boutsen's Benetton in seventh. Brundles Williams is eighth. Then it's Cheever in the Arrows ninth, with Patrese in the second, Williams in tenth. Nanini is eleventh. Then it's Derek Warwick in twelfth place. Ivan Capelli is thirteenth with Satoru Nakajima the home favourite in 14th, then it's Alboreto in 15th, Alio is 16th, Adrian Campos is 17th, then it's the two Ligiers of Arnoux and Johansson in 18th and 19th, Palmer's 20th, Salah's 21st, Schneider is 22nd, Bailey is 23rd, Streff is 24th, Oscar Larari 25th and Yannick Dalmas is the last driver in 26th. The revs are up, the lights are on, and the Japanese Grand Prix is go! And Senna makes a good start from pole position. Alain Prost gets a little bit of wheel spin. He's not able to outjump his Brazilian teammate. And away we go into the first turn. It's Senna, Prost, Mantle, and then Davis. Davis has got past Gerhard Berger's Ferrari. That was quite an extraordinary pass there from the young British driver. So we're back up front, and it's Senna. He maintains position ahead of Alain Prost. What a fantastic start from the McLaren driver. Impressive stuff from Davis as well, up now up into fourth position as Senna leads them round the left-hander and up the hill towards the Degna turns. And now we go in car with Davis's march. And you can see it at the lights. It was a good start from Davis. He made a very good block on Nelson Piquet's Lotus and then trying to follow through with Berger into turn one. He dives to the inside, takes the position away from the Ferrari, forces Berger a little bit wide onto the curbing. But a great clean pass from the young British driver. Very impressive. Well, it was a fantastic pass from Davis, and you could see, though, that the two McLarens and the Ferrari are already pulling away from the underpowered Judd engine, but he's trying his hardest to stay with them, but it's going to be very difficult as ever for him this year. He's made a good start a few times, but then he has really struggled to keep pace with those leading cars, and ever he's always in the fight with the others. Usually it's Berger, but it's mainly Nelson Piquet, but he's off to a good start today. Under the crossover down to the hairpin. Berger's really on the tail of Davis now as they go down, breaking down into 50 or 60 miles an hour as they turn around the tight left-hander. Early on the power. Berger's Ferrari much more powerful than the Judd engine in the march, and he's really on the tail of Davis now. He's going to look for the inside as they go into spoon curl. Davis has got him covered, laid on the brakes for the march driver into the second part of spoon curl, trying to be gentle on the throttle. There he's flooring it. And he's got a bit of a good lead on the Ferrari, but Berger's catching him. Berger with over 100 horses more in his engine than the march, and Berger's going to breeze past on the right-hand side. Davis lets him go, slots into second position behind the Ferrari as they're coming around the 130R, and now they're into the final turn. Davis is in the slipstream. I'm not sure if he's going to have enough speed in that engine to keep up with the Ferrari. He is, you know. He's gaining. He's gaining. As they cross the start finish line, Davis, surely he's not going to look at the first corner. He is! Davis thunders under the braking, retakes the pass from Berger. What a fantastic manoeuvre again. This young man has been really impressive all season long. I mean, personally, I don't even know who even managed to get the car stopped in time to get past Gerhard Berger. Let's have a look at the replay. You can see Prost and Senna already extending their lead ahead of the two Ferrari. And look at that. The car snakes under braking as Davis forces his way past the Austrian driver. Incredible driving from the young, brilliant British driver. We're back on live now. Davis 
in second, uh, in fourth position, sorry. We're on lap two. Berger's all over his gearbox. Berger trying to find a way past. Is he going to go for it down into Degner? Davis has got him covered on the outside. Berger's going to have a look. Is he? It's flat out through here. No chance. Davis covers the line. Snatches a little bit of rear brake under the crossover once again. On lap two, Mantle pulling ahead of the young British driver down into the tight left-hand hairpin. Berger, he's gaining again. He's gaining again in that Ferrari. Davis with a little bit of wheel spin. Dalmas is out of the race. There's no surprise there. But it's Berger in fifth position. He's still chasing Davis now as they go round into the spoon curve once again. Into the first part. It's 120 miles an hour. Little bit of gas less. Early on the power out of the spoon curve. And on the downhill section on the run down to the 130R. Berger, he's got the slipstring. He's going to go for the inside this time. Berger takes the position, Davis just slots in happily, lets him have it. He's going to try it again just to stay in the slipstream of that Ferrari as they come up to the final turn. Obviously the chicanes are missing this year in a bit to really spice up the race. It's got to be tiptoeing through here though, but it's 186 miles an hour through there. Davis, is he going to go again for it as they go over the start finish line? I think he's going to pull out. It's nothing going to be quite as spectacular as it was the last lap round. Davis takes the position again, somewhat predictable. Perhaps Berger should have covered the line there. Yes, I think Berger really should have tried to uh, defend the position there. Davis, I don't think he anticipated again that the, the March Power would have more horses in it than uh, the Ferrari and be able to retake that position. But you can see that Mansell is already pulling away as Davis and Berger are both losing time with this intra battle going on between them. It's enabling Mansell to pull well ahead in third position. Obviously, Prost and Senna leading the race, they are well ahead. Davis snatches a break into the second part of Degna, under the crossover once again. Berger's gaining, gaining. Is Berger going to have a look at the hairpin? No, he's not. He's just going to slot on the inside. Very good driving from the British driver. 55 miles an hour around that tight left-hand hairpin. Down the hill again they go on the approach to Spoon Curve. Berger's gaining. I think Berger's going to try and have a look here, you know. Berger, he's going to switch to the inside. Davis has got him covered once more. Into the Spoon Curve. Davis feathering the throttle beautifully in that March car. Nice and easy. Early on the power. He's early on the power. Berger, he's still with him though. Berger's going to stay with him. He's going to pull out again and Berger's going to slot through on the left-hand side once again and retake the position. Davis just follows that Ferrari into the 130R at 160 miles an hour. Davis, he's going for the outside. Surely he's not going to try something around the outside of the line. Or he is! My goodness! Davis passes Berger at 180 miles an hour around the outside of the final turn. What an incredible pass again from the young British driver. He really has impressed us this year with his tenacity, his racecraft. And down into turn one, Davis ahead of Berger again. Mansell's 3.1 seconds up the road in the Ferrari, in the leading Ferrari. Let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at the replay. Davis following Berger. He looks like he's going to go for the inside. Then he decides to switch it onto the outside. Berger takes, totally taken unawares. Davis absolutely flat out on the throttle, right the way around the outside there. Fantastic pass from the British driver. Berger, we're now on board. He, you can see he covers the inside line. He thinks he's got Davis covered. You could see that Davis was going to anticipate that move and to have the attitude to actually try and make a pass like that around the outside was quite incredible. Absolutely incredible, that's for sure. It certainly was. Davis now feathering the throttle again. He's still trying to keep that Ferrari behind him. On the long uphill left-hander, he's going to try and cover the line into the Degna turns. Berger, is he going to have a look? No, he's not. He's going to slot in behind that march. Davis snatches a little bit of break into the second part of the Degna, under the crossover, on the approach down to the tight left hand, and Berger's going to go for the inside, Davis covers, blocks it, fantastic bit of defensive driving from Davis there, Mansell further accelerating ahead up the road, Davis has got Berger covered in fourth position, you can see the Berger's really going to have a go now, now he's dropped back, Berger, Berger's slowing, for some reason Gerhard Berger's now dropped back behind Davis, I wonder if he's got some sort of a problem. Well, I think he probably has got some sort of a technical issue, Murray. It seems that uh, Berger has really dropped off the pace. Now, you can see that the next car behind Davis is Boots and Benetton. Let's have a look. And you can see Berger suddenly slows. He's suddenly slowing. He's going down the gears. I wonder if he's got some sort of engine failure or some sort of transmission failure. That's a shame for the Ferrari driver. We're back on board, Davis. On lap four, he rounds 160 miles an hour around the 130R. Confirmation, Gerhard Berger is now out of the race. Davis, is he going to try and set after Mansell's Ferrari? Or is he going to now have to try and defend his position from the drivers behind him? 
Into lap five, Davis now up into fourth place. We've still got a problem with the timing screens at the moment. Mansell, 3.2 seconds up the road. Martin Brundles into the pits from ninth position. Let's go down to Jock. Yes, uh, Martin Brundles coming into the pits now, Murray. Uh, it would appear that there's some sort of a problem. He's got his hands up in the air. A uh, little bit of despair there, I think, from the uh, British driver. Uh, it looks as though there's uh, it could be a transmission on an electrical problem once again for the Williams driver in what's been a, quite a torrid season for him. He's going to lose his seat, obviously, this year to the man you've just been commentating on, Joey Davis there. And uh, hopefully it won't be too long before he's back out in the, uh, the racetrack there. Thanks for that job. Well, we've got the timing screens back on as if uh, the uh, TV directors must have been listening to us. And uh, you can see that it's out and center out in front of Satoru Nakajima is out of the race, the home favorite in the uh, the Lotus drive. I'm not sure what's happened, but obviously we'll check back in with uh, Jock and see if uh, we can find out what the problem was for him. But it's center back up front. Prost, 2.3 seconds behind. Then it's Mansell, 8.6 seconds. Davis, 12.5 seconds. Bootson, 15 seconds behind. Then it's PK, Chiva, Patrese, Warwick, and Nanini as Davis goes into the 130R left-hander little bit of lift off and then he's flat out on the gas straight out way into the final turn now still busy trying to chase after Nigel Mansell's Ferrari and you have to say that the uh, this young Brazilian uh, the young British driver sorry he's not uh, Brazilian he's obviously from London uh, the young British driver's driven very well this year and he's impressed greatly there was a big tug of war battle going on earlier in the season for his services for 1989 and uh, obviously it looked as though he was uh, going to possibly sign for Benetton at one point but um, Williams complete with their new Renault engine deal for next year. They uh, obviously persuaded him and he was the man that they, uh, that Patrick Ed and Frank Williams especially wanted in their car for next season. And it means that Martin Brundles had to make way for the young British driver. So it's obviously we're swapping one Brit for, the, for another in the hope that uh, Williams can come up the grid a little bit further next year. And you have to say that based on Davis's performances this year and the massively underpowered and under drivable March car. He's completely trounced his teammate Ivan Capelli as he locks up another break there. You can see the Boosons getting that little bit closer to him. But Davis has really impressed us this year with his race craft and his uh, qualifying speed in particular has been fantastic. I think his uh, his win ratio in qualifying trim over Capelli has been uh, something extraordinary. I think it's 13-2 in favour of the, uh, the Englishman. And uh, the Italian Capelli's really been struggling on the Sunday afternoon. But um, Davis has really, uh, he's, he's not actually outclassed Capelli in the races because uh, Davis has actually had more failures than the Italians. So it's been a bit of a mixed bag for him and I've no doubt that he would have had more points this year and would possibly be sitting as high as fourth or even third in the standings had he not had some of the failures that he's had. But uh, Davis on his way now, starts lap seven. He's now 15 seconds behind Senna, who's pulled out another second and a half over on our pass. He's now 3.5 seconds in the lead and seemingly disappearing up front. Bootson's now only 2.1 seconds behind Davis. Yes, I have to say, I think for me, it's uh, Davis has certainly been the driver of the season. He's uh, he's really impressed me. Um, we seem to be using the word impress quite a lot around this young man, but uh, it's not without reason. He's uh, He's been very good. He's got a very mature head on his shoulders, and he's not afraid to give it to the more established drivers. That's for certain, Murray. Well, yeah, but he's... Uh He's often put himself in a little bit of danger and he keeps locking up and uh, Philip Streff is out of the race. There's no surprise there either. He's uh, had a bit of a mixed bag this season, it's fair to say, but uh, Davis down into the hairpin there, slams on the anchors. He manages to just about get the car stopped. Loses a little bit of time there. You can see Bootson's catching him all the time now. The gap down to two seconds. Oscar Larari, our, one of our favorite drivers in the uh, HS. He's into the pits, not sure why, but uh, I've no doubt possibly we may find out at some point, but you can see the Davis now. I wonder if his tyres are starting to go off. He's only on the power out of the spoon curve there, but Bootson is catching him. Bootson now 1.9 seconds behind him. Mansell extending his lead ahead of Davis, whilst Prost is second. He's now nearly four seconds behind Senna. As Senna well into lap eight already, and he's uh, looking more and more likely as though he's going to take the win today, which is, of course, what the Brazilian really needs today. He's seven points behind Prost in the standings at the moment. He needs to get the win. Prost just needs to uh, keep the car actually in second place, and I think that would probably be enough for him to actually take the title. So it's going to be interesting to see how Prost manages it. And Nigel's going to be really trying to push him as much as he can in the hope that the Frenchman makes a mistake, which is highly unlikely because Prost is known as the professor 
obviously for a very good reason as well. But it's interesting to see that Ricardo Patrese is still going well in eighth position in the Williams, and he's going to be Davis' teammate for next season. Well, yes, I think that uh, Patrese has not really had his work cut out for him this year with Brundle as a teammate. They've been quite closely matched, but I think that next season, I think Patrese is going to really struggle against this young man. I think that uh, Patrese, he, he is relatively quick on a Saturday afternoon, but uh, when it comes to the race draft, he isn't in the same league as this fellow. And uh, Davis, I think, will really uh, push him along. And uh, I think he will very quickly trounce the Italian driver next season. Well, you can see now Bootson, he's less than a second behind Davis now. He's approached the spoon curve. A lot of understeer now. Is he going to get any understeer coming out of the spoon curve? No, it's a low. He seems to be quite good there. But Bootson, earlier on the power. Bootson now in the slipstream of the March Jug. It's going to be interesting now to see if Bootsen can manage to find a way past him. He is literally just less than half a second behind as they go into the 150 mile an hour, 130 hour corner. You can see the Prost is slightly ahead of Davis now. And I wonder, it's, it, it would seem as though Prost has got some sort of a problem. Prost is into the pits. I think Prost is into the pits. He is. Alain Prost is into the pits. I'm not sure what happened there, but Nigel Mance was up into second position. They haven't set us now 16 point seconds ahead. Of, David, of Nigel Mansell, but Davis is now up into an impressive third position, boots him right on the tail of the march, but I'm not sure what's happened to Prost. I think we're going to get a replay here. This should be quite interesting to see. There's Ethan Senna, we're riding along board with him at the moment. There's Larari, and there's Alain Prost. Alain Prost seems to have some part of his car missing. He's missing the front nose. What's the front wing's end plate seems to have disappeared off of his car. I'm not sure what happened. Hopefully we're going to find out, but uh, that means to say that, uh, as I say, Joey Davis is now up into an impressive third position. It's not uncommon for him to have been in this position before, but uh, it would seem as though he's going to have a mountain to climb to try and catch up to Manson and Senna, like he had uh, a few weeks ago in Portugal, where he had his arguably his strongest run of the season, other than Silverstone, when uh, Davis was really battling amongst Prost and Senna. But it would seem as though... Oh, let's have another look at a replay. Yep, and you can see there's Alan Prost. I wonder if he must have gone off. Well, we're hearing reports that he's gone off in the Degna curves. That Prost had lost it under the under the first turn for Degna. He's apparently run wide, and from what we understand, it's not actually been captured on the TV cameras. Well, this is quite extraordinary, I have to say. I've never seen... I don't think I've seen Alan Prost make a mistake in a race for quite some time. I think it's been a good few years. But what a time to make the error. It's very unusual, and Nigel Mansell, you can see there, just comfortably breezes past, and all the while, this is handing Ayrton Senna with a fantastic opportunity to keep the championship chase alive until we get to Australia next time out. This is quite extraordinary. Alain Prost, now having to nurse his McLaren Honda around the 130R corner to make sure he doesn't go off. Well, now we're back on board with Joey Davis, and you can see that... Uh, it's now Bootson in fourth place. Bootson is right on the gearbox of Davis now. He's 0.4 seconds behind the British driver. And the Belgian is going to really try and hammer it home and see if he can get that Benetton up in front of the March car. Bootson, of course, is also losing the drive at the end of this season. He's going to be uh, replaced by uh, Johnny Herbert. Uh, so the rumour is, but of course, uh, Johnny Herbert had his, uh, his famous, uh, his infamous accident in the, uh, a, few weeks, a few weeks ago at uh, Brands Hatch in the Formula 3000 series race when he, uh, he had a very nasty accident, damaged both his ankles. And uh, at the moment, Peter Collins, the, uh, the team boss of the Benetton team, is saying comfortably that uh, the target is still to have Johnny on the grid for next year, but uh, I think that uh, there's been no announcement for, uh, for what Thierry Bootsen's plans are going to be for 1989 because the Belgian seems to be hanging on in the hope that uh, Johnny's not going to be able to race, in which case Bootsen's going to be kept on, possibly. But uh, we'll wait to find out. But it's PK up into fifth. And then it's Eddie Cheever in sixth, Patrese in seventh, Nanini is eighth, Warwick is ninth, and it's this this gentleman's teammate, Ivan Capelli, is down in tenth position as we switch to the TV cameras now, and you can see that Joey Davis is really flat out, and Bootsen is now just struggling to stay behind, stay with the, uh, the March driver. We're on lap nine now, heading towards to lap ten, and Davis, a little bit of break going into the 130R just to look after those tyres a little bit. But you can see that Senna's lead now is back up the front. He's now got his lead up to 17.2 seconds over Nigel Mansell. And Davis is now nearly a whole pit stop behind the Brazilian. And I think that's going to come to me that if Senna needs to pit, or when the Brazilian needs to pit to change his tyres, he's going to come out comfortably in uh, second position, providing that uh, Mansell doesn't stop first. 
and he's going to keep the lead. So this should be quite interesting. But uh, you can see now Davis has got a back marker in front of him. I believe that's Julian Bailey in the Tyrrell. So hopefully Davis is going to be uh, on, the, on the tail of the Tyrrell very shortly. And Davis will be sincerely hoping that uh, Bailey is not going to hold him up too much because Bootsen is breathing right down his neck. And Bootsen going to be hoping that he is going to have a little bit of an opportunity now as they enter Degna 1. And Davis is entering Degna 2 and he almost, almost hits the back. It's Palmer, I think. He almost hits the Tyrrell. The Tyrrell now moves out of the way. Yep, it's Jonathan Palmer, but Bootsen's now right with Davis as they come down into the hairpin. Davis locks up massively, has to cut across to block Thierry Bootsen. As Bootsen's trying to get past the British driver, he's not able to do it. McKaylee Alvaredo's into the pits in the Minardi, but Davis now, he's absolutely flat out on the uphill section now, heading down towards the spoon curve. And we can see now the TV screens have now thankfully given us a few more drivers to look at. Johansson in 11th. In the Ligier, Italio Lola in 12th, Adrian Campos in the other Minardi, he's now 13th, Brundle, he's managed to get going again in 14th position in the other Williams, and then it's Arnu in the other Ligier. But here we go, the battle's really on, obviously. Bootson now trying to get past Davis, Davis is going to cover him, Bootson goes to the outside, but Davis blocks the inside. Great bit of defensive driving there. The really intriguing battle here is between these two because obviously it's not just down to the drivers, but it's the teams themselves. As a driver's off in front of Davis there, I wonder who that was. My God, that could have been a very nasty accident. That's a flat out 185 miles an hour quarter there. So hopefully whoever that was is not uh, not in too bad a shape there. I'm, I wonder if it was another back marker because we're still showing that Senna and Mansell were in front. And it's Lurari. Oh, sadly, Lurari's run out of road there. Possibly run out of talent as well. Yeah, I think that uh, Lurari seemed to have just got a massive bit of understeer there on the uh, entrance to that turn there. And I think that he's, uh, he's very lucky to get away, uh, walk away from that accident, actually. That's a quite scary moment there. But we can really see now that uh, Davis is battling hard to try and keep this Benetton forward behind him as uh, Thierry Putin seems to be having a look down the inside. But Davis, obviously, he's got it covered in a Degna tour now approaching the crossover, but all of this is actually allowing Nelson Piquet to close back up. Well, yeah, you can see that uh, Bootson, he's still struggling, but now Piquet's right with Bootson, which is gonna make this an interesting three-way battle on lap 11 out of 27, and we're hoping that uh, Davis is gonna have the pace here to be able to go through the spoon curve, but Alain Prost is in again. I wonder if that's gonna be for Tyre's job. Yes, Muddy, it is uh, Alain Prost, he's coming, but uh, the team, they were worried about get, uh, stopping him for tyres before, and perhaps that was a mistake, because really they should have uh, given him a new set of rubber, but they never did, so now he's come back in. And you can see now, as, uh, I'm sorry, Jock, didn't mean to cut you off there, but Bootson's really trying to find his way through. Davis blocks him again, Bootson has to slow, which also means the pk has got to get out of the gas as well to avoid hitting the Benetton in the Lotus. This is fantastic stuff now. They're flat out through with 180 miles an hour corner of the final turn. Over the start finish line as we start lap 12 now. Davis in front of Bootson and Piquet. But, but, but Davis is slowing. Oh no, he's got an engine problem again. This, this hapless driver's luck and bad luck continues this season. And Davis is losing power. He's losing power and it's not going to be long before Bootson is back ahead of him. Oh, this is such a shame for the 24-year-old British driver. Absolute heartbreak. Bootson goes round the outside. PK surely going to follow very shortly. So does Eddie Cheever. Oh, Davis, what a shame. What an absolute shame. This young man has impressed this year, and it's yet another failure. I mean, it's going to be quite interesting to find, figure out, actually, maybe at the end of this race, how many failures he's had this year. But you can just see his hands are on his head. He's absolutely in despair. It's another retirement. And he was actually laying in third position, and I, I, I dread to think how many points he's actually lost this season, as we mentioned this earlier. But he's now dropped into 10th place. Smoke pouring out of the back of the March car. Another Judd ending failure. And this is absolutely heartbreaking for the British driver. Well, yes, it is. It's absolutely terrible for him. He's, uh, he's driven very well all race. He's battled hard. He was driving comfortably ahead of Boots, and he was... You, I would say that he, was, he, he maybe could have struggled for a few more laps to keep Putin and PK behind him, but he looked like he had the measure of them, at least until the pit stops. But sadly for the British driver, it's not to be. A great shame, really great shame. He really drove very well today. Oh, it's an absolute shame. And now with Dave, it's an absolute shame, sorry. And with now with Davis out of the race now, the TV cameras, obviously now they're going to pick up the race leader, finally. 
and it's head and center. He's now extended his lead over Nigel Mansell to 25.6 seconds. It's Boots and he's now up into third place. Then it's Nelson Piquet. Then it's Eddie Cheever in fifth place. And the final points paying position at the moment is Ricardo Patrese. Alessandro Nanini in the Benetton is seventh. Warwick in the Arrows is eighth. It's Capelli in ninth in the March. And it's Johansson, so somewhat surprisingly, in the Ligier, who's up into tenth position. But of course, all of this is going to see that with, uh, with Davis's retirement, Bootson's going to be picking up the four points for third position, obviously providing that he can keep going. And if Alessandro Nanini can get, gain one more spot ahead of Ricardo Patrese, that's going to be another few points for the Benetton team, who before this race were five points adrift of the March guys. And this will really, really put the cat amongst the pigeons as we head into the Australian Grand Prix in a couple of weeks' time because it's going to mean that not only is the driver's battle going to be going down to the wire, but so also is the battle for fourth place in the Constructors' Championship. Well, absolutely. I think it's uh, intriguing that we've got so many battles up and down the grid this year, Murray. It's been very, very entertaining. As you can see, that Ayrton Senna lapping the uh, hapless Arnoux in the Ligier finally manages to get away past hit the Frenchman, who can, is really a complete waste of space in that car. He really should have retired about five years ago. But uh, still he continues, I suppose, the, uh, the French backing of the cigarette companies that he seems to have in his back pocket is obviously paying dividends and keeping this useless driver in Formula 1 when really he should be giving up his seat to somebody else. Well, I don't know if that's a bit harsh there, James, but uh, anyway, we are back up front now. Senna, he's clear, he's 28 seconds ahead of Nigel Mansell, and it looks as though the Brazilian has got... Uh, got this race bought and paid for at the moment although I uh, don't wish to give him the kiss of death but obviously it's only lap 13 Nanini comes into the pits I think that's probably for his tyre stop job yes Muddy uh, there's a few drivers now coming in as uh, Nanini pits from 7th uh, position it, and uh, it's quite a clean start for the Benetton boys as uh, Ivan Capelli is also coming down the pit lane now in the March team and I think but, uh, the battle's going to be certainly on but uh, the, the the hope in for Nanini and the, especially for the Benetton team is that they will be able to uh, make score enough points today to be able to uh, to jump. And Senna's coming into the pit. Sorry, Chuck. Senna is into the pit lane, and it looks as though the Brazilian is going to be coming in on lap 15, the start of lap 15, and uh, we're going to see if the McLaren Honda boys can get him out without any trouble. Obviously, he's got a very comfortable lead of over 28 seconds to Nigel Mansell in second place in the Ferrari. It's going to be interesting. Senna comes into the stops. It's a nice and clean stop there for the McLaren boys. A little wipe of the visor. It's going to be interesting to see how long this one is going to be. He's got to wait for the loader to go past. And it's 8.6 seconds. A good stop in, by all accounts from the, uh, the McLaren boys. And Senna, he's just on the rev limiter now. He's waiting to be released. And away he goes back out in front. And who's this? Is this Nigel Mantle behind him? It is. And Mantle gets totally chopped by Ayrton Senna, so obviously Senna had got slightly held up in the pit lane, had to, he had to wait behind, uh, the, I think the McLaren boys had actually held him back to avoid him clashing into uh, the Lola that was also exiting the pit lane, and that's given Nigel Mansell the chance to uh, catch up to the Brazilian, but obviously now I think that Mansell's yet to pit, so really uh, Nigel, he's not going to be able to make any inroads, Senna's going to be on fresher rubber, and away the Brazilian goes, you can already see he's extended his lead, but now he's got a three-way battle in front of him for position with the back marker, so I'm pretty sure that Senna's actually going to get held up here by the Lola, look at that, Senna just pulls away from the, uh, at the underpass, out of Degna 1, out of Degna 2, sorry, into the hairpin, he's already passed and he's already now coming up to the Minardi, round the tight left-hand hairpin, is Senna going to go on the outside here, I think he is, he's round the outside of Michele Alvaredo, great manoeuvre by Senna, He's so ruthless in the traffic. And here he comes up to the next Cyril. Is he passed? Is he passed into Stoon Curve? Of course he is. He's straight up the inside there, Ayrton Senna. As if there's just standing still. And you can see that Senna's already passed three of them. Nigel Mansell struggled to get past only one of them. He's still got two of them to get by. But Senna, he's on the fresher rubber. He's on lap 14 out of 27. And he's really accelerating up the lead now. Fantastic bit of driving from Ayrton Senna. Into the 130R he goes. Ayrton Senna pulling away, and it's uh, it's quite apt now that we're actually going to talk just for a little bit about how this season has gone for the Brazilian, because he's really been dominant on a Saturday afternoon. He's taken 15 out of 15 pole positions. He's absolutely trounced Alain Prost. It's been a complete and utter diabolical performance from Alain Prost. Oh, I wouldn't actually say that, Murray. I think that he's just, uh, he really has struggled to, uh, 
to get the uh, the car set up. Right. Well, yes, I know, but he he's really struggled to compete with Ayrton Senna on a Saturday afternoon, and I'm just going crazy because I absolutely love watching Senna on a qualifying lap. Well, yes, I think uh, you're absolutely right. He has been quite phenomenal on a Saturday afternoon, Murray. Ayrton Senna really has been uh, the man to beat this year, even when it hasn't looked like he was going to, but uh, for sure. Alain Prost has really uh, struggled at times uh, to compete with the Brazilian. But on a Sunday, I know that he uh, he struggled earlier in the season, and there was a lot of uh, a lot made in the press about uh, favoritism once again on a Brazilian driver in a very much a sort of a copybook of what happened last year between the Williams and the uh, the Honda engines and uh, the favoritism that was uh, found to be uh, actually occurring between Honda and uh, Nelson Piquet's attempt on the World Championship, which thankfully didn't work out. Honda got a $5 million fine for it. Um, and uh, But Alain Bross, he's had a lot of, as we ride on board with the great Frenchman now, the defending world champion. But uh, yes, there was a lot of uh, talks between Honda and uh, Ron Dennis and the Frenchman just to put Alain's mind at rest. And it really was uh, quite good of the team to actually do that. And Bross has subsequently come out and said that he's quite comfortable that there is no favoritism towards them. And I think it's just the fact that the uh, this MP44 car seems to be far more better suited towards uh, the driving style of Ayrton Senna. Well, yes, I think I think that's fair to say because Senna so far has won seven times this year to Prost's five. And uh, although Prost has had one less uh, engine failure than Ayrton Senna, Senna obviously had a torrid time a couple of races ago in Portugal when uh, he lost out in the, uh, the start of the race, actually, when he collided with the, uh, the March of Davis going into turn two as uh, Senna had made a slight error in turn one, lost a little bit of traction. Davis tried to take the inside... Senna just basically turned in on him and then tried to blame it all on the on his rival. And uh, the TV cameras, as I say, they don't lie. And uh, Senna was quite rightly uh, pillared for it in the press because uh, even Davis was saying that he uh, he wasn't actually uh, at fault for that one. But Senna, anyway, onwards and upwards. The Brazilian, he's looking towards taking an eighth win this season and extending the championship. Just one more race into the final race in Adelaide in a couple of weeks' time. But it's going to be, it's not going to be easy for him. He's got to make sure that he nurses the car. He's got Prost well and truly out of the points at the moment. But uh, I think there's little doubt that Alain is going to try and fight his way back through. So there is every possibility that Prost could still clamber a sixth position or maybe even a fifth place finish back. But it depends how much time he's lost behind them because he's not even in the top ten yet. And we've only got another ten laps to go. So it's going to be quite interesting to see if Prost can find his way past Brundle. He's then got to find his way past Capelli and Warwick and then... Alessandro Nanini and then Eddie Cheever's arrows. So it's going to be quite interesting to see if Prost can do it. But I think the interest now at the moment is that Ricardo Petrezzi seems to have jumped ahead of Thierry Boutsen. Boutsen's had some sort of an issue somewhere because all of a sudden he seems to have dropped back in third position. And all of and PK as well. So it seems to be quite odd that uh, Ricardo Petrezzi has now found himself up into third position in the Williams. I think that's actually the highest that the Williams has run all season, isn't it, Jake? I think it is, Murray. I think that uh, which is un unusual because Patrese usually doesn't describe, uh, doesn't display this sort of much talent to be able to run in the third position. Well, I think that's a little bit unfair there, James, but uh, I know you've got a little bit of a beef with uh, Patrese, but uh, go easy on the Italian. He's quite a likeable chap. And there's another driver's gone off in front, and it's Alain Prost again. He's gone off in front of Senna, and it looks as though Senna is actually about to lap the Frenchman. This is quite extraordinary. Senna, he pulls up alongside Pross, wiggles out of the way to let Senna through. Again, I wonder what happened to Pross. He must have some sort of a, a slight fault with his car, perhaps a problem with the steering or something. But it's very unusual. Here's a replay. Pross coming down the back straightaway, approaching the uh, the 130R left-hander. And you can see he's, he's, he's shaking the car about. He seems to have some sort of a problem. Off the gas. Seems, I, he's swerving again all over the road. I wonder if he's got a loose wheel, but he hasn't. He seems to, and then he's just run wide. I'm not sure what happened there, James. It's very unusual behaviour from the McLaren driver there. I'm not sure, and he obviously then just had to let Ayrton Senna go. So I don't know quite what happened there. We seem to have a technical problem with the uh, with the TV cameras. There a little bit of a flash start, re uh, flashback to the start of the race, which is obviously not what we wanted. But now we're back with the action. Well, yes, we're back with the action, but now uh, it seems so. Chiva, Chiva is out of the race. He's now down in ninth position, so Eddie Cheever seems to have retired from eighth position. Lost a place to Capelli, so all of this is going to promote Martin Brundle up to ninth. 
and, uh, and I fear it's also going to push Alain Prost now up into the top 10, despite the fact that the Frenchman, he is, he's one lap down behind his Brazilian and title rival Ayrton Senna. But this is quite extraordinary race. Drivers are really, uh, they're falling by the wayside at the moment. Senna under the brakes into the left-hand hairpin. Nice and easy on the power. He's beautiful to watch at the center. He's absolutely relentless around this circuit. Back it down into the 130R now. Coming up to the end of lap 18. At the center, he's got a very comfortable lead now over Nigel Mansell. It's back out to 12.6 seconds. Ricardo Patrese, a massive 41.6 seconds behind. Then it's Thierry Butson's Benetton. And then the Nini's Benetton is also now up into fifth place. And that's quite extraordinary because that now means the Benetton have now got two... They've now got five points, which means they're going to jump ahead as the March team if uh, Ivan Capelli isn't able to score any points. And obviously with Davis's retirement, this means that Benetton are going to jump from sixth position in the, in the Constructors' Championship up to fourth with just one race to go. This is going to be an appalling race for the March team if Ivan Capelli isn't able to get at least fifth position. This is going to be quite extraordinary. But he is quite some way back. He's over 18 seconds behind Nanini's Benetton, so this is going to be quite intriguing to watch. But Senna again into Degna 1, down into Degna 2. He's absolutely on it, that Brazilian. He's really got this place nailed. The car looks absolutely beautiful. He's made no mistakes all weekend. He was fastest on Friday practice, fastest in Saturday practice, and he's made a fantastic start today, and he's just totally pulled away from everybody else. And now he's coming up to Oscar Lorari. So obviously Lorari, who we saw have an accident a little bit earlier, Managed to avoid clumping the wall too badly, but Senna's just got massively balked by him. Absolutely balked by him. This is going to give Prost the opportunity to really close back up to his teammate. Not that it's going to make any difference, but Senna, he's still stuck behind Lorari. I wonder if has Senna got some sort of a problem? He's on the outside now. Is he sure he's going to breeze past him? No, he's not. Senna, he gets balked again. Lorari, this is absolutely appalling driving. Absolutely appalling. Senna, he's now got... He's at uh, Olarari had gone off and Senna's massively out of the throttle. And now Prost is taking the inside. Prost down the inside. Prost has to get out of the gas to avoid hitting him. This is exciting stuff. This is fantastic. The two McLarens now, they're side by side. Prost desperate to try and unlap himself from Ayrton Senna. He's got the inside line. Senna, surely, he's going to have to let him go. Senna lets him go. This is fantastic stuff. But Ivan Capelli is out. So the March team, they've now got a double failure today. And what's happened? Oh, another engine failure. This is terrible luck for this team. But now we're back with Oscar Lavari. And look at that, this gentleman. He's off the road again. Nearly took both McLarens out. What an extraordinary turn of events that would have been had he hit both Senna and Prost. But Prost, he's now back up ahead of Senna. And he's still just trying to keep ahead of the Brazilian. Senna trying every this way and that way to try and find a way past his French teammate. But Prost is having none of it. Prost is determined to keep his rival behind him. Down into Degna, one centre, he forces his way through. Well, that's an amazing pass, but I think that maybe Prost had actually led him through there, James. I think Prost was, uh, he was very wise there, and uh, I think he was a little bit nervous that Senna was actually going to take them out. I think Prost is playing the long game here. Senna taking unnecessary risks, but he's the younger driver. He's less experienced than Prost, and Prost is thinking to himself, I'm in ninth position, there's drivers are falling by the wayside. I'm luckily enough. Yes, I've made a couple of errors today, but uh, my car's still going, and uh, there's hope yet. We've got uh, six laps to go, six and a half laps to go. There's everything to play for. Prost is going to really try and uh, see what he can do and catch up to the drivers in front of him, see if he can gain another couple of positions. And Senna, Senna's over the line now to start lap 23 out of 27. And Senna, he's chasing after. Now, who is this? This is, I believe this is now Martin Brundles Williams, his old Formula 3 rival. Senna's now going to try and lap Martin Brundle in seventh place. There's only Derek Warwick ahead. Obviously, Derek Warwick, the gentleman who uh, Senna blocked from his time of joining the Lotus team back in the 1986 season when it looked certain that, Pro that Derek Warwick was going to join him. And then, obviously, Senna vetoed that. But now Senna, he's on his way now. He's on lap 23. He's going to charge into deck. No one. He's absolutely flat out. Very late on the brakes there, the Brazilian. He's gaining hand over fist over Brundles Williams, which is massively underpowered in the Judd engine compared to the Honda power unit that's in the back of Ayrton Senna's car. Senna down into the left-hand hairpin in the Shell's oils hairpin there. Senna is going to have far more traction. His V6 turbo engine absolutely blasting past the normally aspirated Judd-powered Williams there. 
Senna. He's only got three and a half laps to go. And what looks like it's going to be quite an interesting finish and a finale to the race as we're back now viewing Nigel Mansell. Mansell is now 20 seconds down the road from Senna. A comfortable second place. And Mansell's... Uh, his reliability this year, whilst the performance has not been fantastic for Ferrari, he's only won one race this year, but the uh, the performance of that Ferrari in terms of reliability has been extraordinary. I think Nigel's only retired from one race, and although he's only won one time this season, he's, uh, he's managed to score a lot of podiums. He's totally outperformed his team at Gerhard Berger. And I think, for me, I think Ferrari could well be the dark horses for the next year because... They've already been testing what is uh, rumoured to be a first in that uh, they're going to try something brand new on their car for 1989, which is something called a semi-automatic gearbox, James. Do we know anything about it? Well, yes, Murray. I think um, I spoke to John Barnard a couple of weeks ago, actually, about this uh, when we were on the plane back from uh, Mexico. And uh, John was sort of explaining to me very loosely what it's actually going to do. And it's actually designed to st stop the... Uh, driver needing to use a manual gear shift which should mean that uh, there's a quicker transition between uh, the gears and it just basically means that the drivers never have to uh, take their hands off the steering wheel well that's it that's an extraordinary piece of technology there if they are able to use that but obviously new devices like that change they're uh, obviously quite prone to uh, potential reliability issues as well well, yes, this is something that uh, John did allude to, and uh, I know that he's had uh, Fiat executives, obviously, since the un unfortunate death of uh, Enzo Ferrari in uh, the back end of August this year. Uh, he's uh, been pushing, he's been pushed very much by uh, some of the big bosses at Fiat that uh, are a little bit unkeen for them to use this uh, new device for next year. But Barnard is absolutely swearing blind that it'll, it's going to at least save them two to three tenths a second lap, and uh, it could actually make the big difference for them uh, to actually be able to challenge for the title next season. Well, yes, I think it would be. It, uh, it sounds like it's, uh, it's going to be an intriguing one for them, and I th I'm pretty sure that Mansell and uh, Berger, who are going to be teammates next year, are going to be as Bootsons looking at the inside of Patrese, but Patrese slams the door into Degna 1, into Degna 2, and under the crossover, Patrese now is absolutely convinced that he is not going to be giving up that third-place position. As we are seeing now, Ayrton Senna, he's only got this lap, the next one, and then the one after that. So it's not on the last lap or the one before that, but he's on the one before that as well. So this is going to be quite extraordinary to see if Ayrton Senna can actually manage to uh, lap Derek Warwick as well and take the final points paying position away from uh, from Alain Prost because uh, Prost is now, he still hasn't passed Martin Brundle, which is quite extraordinary. But uh, we're back with Bootsen and Patrese in the battle for third position, and this is going to be quite extraordinary now because there's only half a second between the two of them. Bootsen's in the slipstream. Bootsen in the Ford-powered V8. Yeah, I think he's going to be trying to get past Patrese if he can into the deck, into the uh, 130R, and he's not able to do it. Is he going to try Davis and go for the outside? He is. Is he going to be able to pull it off? I very much doubt it. No, nope, he's not able to. Patrese just simply covers the line. booton has got to get out of the throttle and try again. Is he going to be able to get the slipstream down the main straight into turn one? He's over the line with Patrese. He's going to go for it. He's going to pull up the inside. Is Patrese going to be able to hold him off? He does. Bootsen. He, man, he wasn't able to get past him there. Well, I have to say, I think that he chickened out of that one, Murray. He should have really just uh, done a Davis and stuck his foot in there and actually just gone hell for leather on that one. I think that uh, unless Bootsen's able to get another attempt at that, that's a wasted opportunity on the third position for the, uh, the Belgian driver. Well, we're back with him, and now we're looking at the rearward facing camera from Bertrand. He's Williams. He's going to try. Bootsen's going to have a look. Is he? No, he follows Patrese into Decna 1. Hard on the brakes into Decna 2. Ready for the crossover. His boots are going to try something in the upcoming hairpin, the left-hand hairpin. I think he is. He's going for the right-hand side, but Patrese's got him covered. Patrese, you can see the flames bursting out of the back of that engine. Patrese, hard on the power, out of the hairpin now. We're on board with Bootsen on Bootsen's front suspension. Bootsen's going to try it. Is he going to have a look at the spoon curve? Let's see if Patrese can get him covered. Bootsen, he switches into the left-hand side, but he's not able to do it. So the Belgian just backs off the gas a little bit. He's got far more traction than the Williams, you can see. Is he going to follow it now? He's going to follow Patrese. He's hard on the power out of the, out of the spoon curve. Is Patrese going to be able to keep him behind him? I very much doubt it, but Bootsen pulls alongside the Williams. Bootsen's going to be going the side by side on the approach to the 130R. There's nothing between them, but Bootsen's got ahead, and Patrese just lets him go. As the TV cameras now pan forward to Ayrton Senna, and I think we're going to have to keep a close eye on that because the TV cameras are not going to be coming back to Bootsen and Patrese's battle, I don't think, because this is a Honda-powered McLaren Honda driven by the Mercurial Ayrton Senna in Japan. And I think that uh, the TV cameras now are just going to be purely focusing on Senna, going for this eighth win of the season. 
and hopefully closing the gap to Alain Prost, who, if Prost is unable to make any inroads into Derek Warwick in sixth position, Senna is going to jump him at the season end, and he's actually going to jump two points clear of his French rival as they head down into Australia next time out. But Senna, he rounds the final turn. Senna is about to start the final lap of the Japanese Grand Prix. This has been an absolute, and he's actually crossing the line now, and Senna, Senna takes the win for McLaren. A fantastic drive from the Brazilian. What a fantastic drive. I almost got caught out by that chase. Yes, a quite brilliant drive from there, Senna there, Murray. And uh, just as well you didn't uh, get caught out there. As Nigel Mansell comes around the uh, the 130R there in the, uh, in the Ferrari. That's a great bit of driving from Nigel Mansell. Obviously 24, nearly 25 seconds adrift of the Brazilian. Nigel's not going to be too happy with that, but it's another six points in the bag. Well, it's the battle between Bootson and Patrese that we really want to see on the screens. And Philippe Alio, he's, uh, uh, Bootson's now, he's actually managed to pull away, so I wonder if Patrese's made some sort of an error somewhere. But Bootson, he's trapped behind the Lola, and he's got really bulked there, and is that going to give Patrese an opportunity to try and close the gap? I don't think it's going to. I think there's uh, not, enough hour, not enough daylight hours left for Patrese to try and catch Bootson. Bootson rounds the 130R, and Thierry Bootson, after a fantastic performance, really, from the underpowered Benetton team, Be Bootson is actually going to take third place, and this is really going to catapult uh, the Benetton team up ahead of the March and Arrows team in the Constructors' Championship. Bootson takes the line. He finishes third. It's Patrese in fourth. Alessandro Nanini, he's going to take fifth with Derek Warwick sixth place, but it's Ayrton Senna taking his eighth win of the season for McLaren. Senna with a fantastic performance. He's waving to the crowd. Brazilian flags are waving in the crowd as well. Everybody absolutely delighted. The Japanese crowds are going absolutely crazy for this man. They worship him in Brazil. And that's the race over. What a drive from Ayrton Senna. Fantastic stuff. Official race results now with Ayrton Senna. You can see he finishes 25.2 seconds ahead of Mansell's Ferrari. Then it's Thierry Bootson's Benetton Ford in third place, picking up four points. Patrese in the Williams Jug in fourth. Nanini is fifth. And Derek Warwick in the Arrows Megatron finishes in sixth place with Alain Prost, a recovery drive after quite a lackluster performance from the Frenchman in seventh position. You can see that there were only 16 finishes. Everybody else having a variety of transmission and engine failures. One accident, which was Adrian Campos. And you can see the fastest laps there from Ayrton Senna, over half a second faster, somewhat surprisingly, than Nelson Piquet in the other Lotus Honda-powered car. And the driver's standings now after 15 of the 16 races this season. Ayrton Senna, after that victory today, he's now on 84 points. Alain Prost in the other McLaren, he's on 82. There's only two points behind the two drivers now, as we've only got one race left to go. It's going to be all to play for in Australia next time out. Nigel Mansell maintains his third position, and he's got that secured now. 25 points adrift at the centre. Then it's Nelson Piquet, Berger in fifth. It's Joey Davis in sixth place. In the Constructors' Championship, obviously McLaren Honda even further ahead now on 166. Then it's Ferrari on 92 and Lotus Honda in third. That it's Bennett's on Ford, who have now dropped. They've now jumped one point ahead of March Judd. They're on 24 points. Then it's March on 23. Arrows are on 20 points. And then it's the Williams. We'll see you next time in Australia. Thanks for watching.